Hello and good evening students and welcome back to Global Online Platform. This is Chandni Swarnikar and today we are going to cover Gems Joyce. So as you all know that Gems Joyce wrote a lot of work so we need to divide the lectures in two parts okay so today we are going to cover part one and with part one we are going to cover some important works of gems choice now you can get my lecture at 8 pm on a daily basis but uh, before diving into the video let me share that there is a great opportunity for you all okay to prepare uh, for april 2024 maharashtra set global online is offering a comprehensive english literature course you will have access to video lectures that explain concepts using short and effective methods. The course also provides downloadable PDF notes for your convenience. Additionally, you will get mock tests that simulate real exam conditions. And the best part is that you are get, uh, getting complete course of paper one for free. Okay, so to learn more, uh, reach out to the provided contact number. Now, if you want to watch the free videos, uh, first download the global online app. Okay. Once you are in, head to the source section. There you will find details of all the courses. Use the search bar to directly type in the course name and you will see an overview along with fees for the duration. Now, click on the content section and there you will find unit wise folders. In each unit, you will get theory lectures, evaluation, notes, mock tests and MCQs. No need for extra reading. Now, if you decide to join the paid course, do remember that we are starting a new batch from 22nd of February, 22nd of February. So, if you are interested and uh, if you think that can help you, do join it, okay? And uh, there you will also be added to a WhatsApp group. In that group, you will receive PDF for each session along with the videos link. It's a great way to stay connected uh, with your facilitator and get additional resources. So, happy learning. Now, moving on to our main writer main topic so about whom we are going to talk today so let me give you an overview of the works of joseph conrad okay so do remember that you need to cover all the works in detail uh, those are very important and uh, very prominent works okay especially that so we are going to cover almayas holy foley and outcast of the islands then the nigger of the narcissus then heart of darkness this is darkness this is not darkness uh, then uh, lord jim will be there then uh, the inheritors then typhoon and uh, it seems like tycoon but uh, never mind nostromo okay so these are the works that we are going to do today and let me tell you two of them are very important for you to know and even the um, summary is important okay so heart of darkness you need to know the summary read the summary in detail read the characters i have mentioned already the characters but you need to know the quotations and summary okay for maharashtra set now moving on to the next uh, very important work lord jim you also need to know the summary for this particular work because uh, you cannot skip this work these are very 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 important works okay now let's start with uh, the uh, from the starting okay from the beginning now joseph conrad was born in 1857 when 1857 and died in 1924 okay after the west lines publication after two years of westland publish um, publication date okay publishing publication year joseph conrad died in 1924 so the publication year of the west Lion is 1922 yeah, I hope you do remember this. Now, Joseph Conrad was a very prominent writer, the greatest uh, writer in the English language. There are a lot of writers who are great uh, as if um, they have already covered, for example, T.S. Eliot and all. So, T.S. Eliot, J.H., uh, D.H. Lawrence, uh, George Bernard Shaw, these are also the very important, but he is also one of the greatest writers in the English language. That is why we are covering him okay now he is also a british novelist short story writer he contributed in short stories as well as in novels so he was a polish british novelist and short story writers do remember this okay now let's cover the works so let's cover with the first work i have already uh, arranged the work in a chronological order so you don't need to worry about that okay so the first work is almayas folly it was published in 1800 
95. So when somebody, of course not somebody, examiner will ask you that uh, which one is the first novel of Joseph Conrad. So there you just don't think much, just go for Elmire's Folly, okay. So the first novel is Elmire's Folly of Joseph Conrad's right polish british novelist and short story writer now it centers around uh, the life of dutch trader casper elmire where in the borneo jungle and his relationship to his mixed heritage daughter nina so there while you like while reading elmire's folly you will get to know that there is a dutch trader okay so the name is casper elmire and there's one another character is nina that is um his mixed heritage daughter Nina okay and that is set in the Borneo jungle the whole uh, thing is based on Borneo jungle and the work is talking about Caspar Meyer as well as his relationship with his daughter okay so these are the important details that is it now the next work an outcast of the islands and uh, you will feel that uh, while reading Joseph Conrad somewhere you will feel oh he is associated with islands and all jungle okay so you will feel when you will read it An Outcast of the Island is his uh, second novel and it was published in 1896 when in 1896 and as I most of the time quote uh, Krishna's lines from Gita, Karmanne uh, Vadikaraste. So I am not uh, saying or reciting the whole quote. Okay. So here basically T. S. Eliot's The Holo Men, quoted in T. S. Eliot's The Holo Men, Life is Very Long. Okay. So it was actually quoted in T. S. Eliot's The Holo Man. And do remember this information. And also, it was inspired by Conrad's experience as mate of a steamer, the Vidar. Okay, so he was very much inspired by that and because of that experience, he wrote this particular work. Okay, now a story features Conrad's recurring character, Tom Lingard, who also appears in Elmire's Folly in 1895 and The Rescue 1920. So when the examiner will ask you that, okay, Tom Lingard appeared in three books of Joseph Conrad. You will answer that the first will be An Outcast of the Island, second Elmire's Folly and then The Rescue. Okay, story features Conrad's recurring character and the character name is Tom Lingard. Now, moving on. Now, the story follows Peter Willems, a disgraced and morally ambiguous character. Okay. So, disgraced and morally ambiguous character as he navigates the complex and treacherous world of the Southeast Asian islands. So, here also islands is there and is actually uh, navigating the complexity and treacherous uh, viewpoint or treacherous world of the Southeast, Southeast Asian islands. Okay, So, this is it. You don't need to get into deep. Now, the third is The Nigger of the Narcissus. So, the full title is The Nigger of the Narcissus, Colin, A Tale of the Forecastle. But also, sometimes it is also subtitled as A Tale of the Sea. A Tale of the Forecastle and A Tale of the Sea. Don't get confused. And also, like uh, when it was, was being published in the United States, it was published as The Children of the Sea. Okay, so do remember, don't get confused. They can get, uh, like in, they can make you confused and, uh, okay, they can give you so many names and you will get confused that, okay, who wrote this particular work? If you don't remember this information, okay? And it's a novella. Do remember, it's not a novel, it's a novella. Now, the beginning uh, line, the lines uh, with uh, the story begins, that is very important. A work that aspires, however, humbly, to the condition of art should carry its justification in every line. A work that aspires, however humbly, to the condition of art should carry its justification in every line. Moving on, the fourth one, Heart of Darkness. This is Darkness. 1899, it's also a novella. It was set uh, in 1890 at the height of European coloni uh, colonialism. 
Heart of Darkness. Basically, it tells the story of Marlow and his voyage through the Congo as a riverboat commander. So he was a riverboat commander, and the voyages are there, and it talks about Marlow. Okay. Basically, as he penetrates deeper into the center of the Congo, he is unprepared for the brutality he sees and becomes. Becomes what? Becomes obsessed with finding an evasive, charismatic ivory trader named Curl. Okay, so he was actually very much obsessed at the end uh, to find an evasive, charismatic ivory trader named, basically, trader named Curl. So these are the important things that you need to know. There is a character Marlow, and his and his own journey, and uh, so many things he see, and because of that, he was very much shocked. And after sometimes he became obsessed with uh, finding a trader named Kurtz. Okay, so there are a lot of characters, but the important characters, not the very not like a lot of characters are not there, but very important character characters are there. Just for example, Kurtz. He is an evasive manager of the inner station, like Marlow was looking for him. Second, the manager. He is contemptible manager of the central station. He was the manager. Marlow, of course, the protagonist, pilots the steamboat. Okay. The next is the Russian. Okay. The Russian. Wait a minute. So, the Russian is a youthful harlequin like figure enchanted by Kurtz. So, just remember the Russian because somewhere uh, they asked. Okay. So, some of the quotations are also famous of Russian. So, do remember that. Do search. Then the jungle, of course, jungle is not the character, but still, uh, because it was set in jungle, so jungle was actually uh, present, ever present as a antagonist. Okay, so uh, kind of a villain. So do remember this. Sixth, healthman. Okay, dependable African for whom Marlowe gains respect. Okay, so there is a healthman character, uh, African character. Okay, now. Like after meeting Kurtz, uh, basically Kurtz is near to death. Okay, there. So somewhere Kurtz says something, whispers. Uh, Marlow hears that. So when you will read the story, you will actually uh, feel the pain when he died. Okay, so you will feel it. So do remember to read it out. Okay, when Marlow next speaks with, speaks with him, Kurtz is near death. Marlow hears him weakly whisper the horror. The horror. Okay, so do remember this is very important quote. Then the next one is Lord Jim. Lord Jim basically it was published in 1900 and it's a story of Jim, um, idealistic yet flawed young seaman whose heroic dreams are destroyed by a moment of fear. Just imagine you think you are an idealistic person but you are also flawed and uh, somewhere you think uh, that I'll be a superman, a superhero and I'll do this, I'll do that and then everything uh, comes to end or destroy by a moment of fear. Okay. So, let me tell you, a tale of an idealistic young seaman, he was a seaman who in a moment of fear, shatters his dream of glory. Okay, so like uh, all of a sudden what happens, he actually in one cowardly leap, he abandons a damaged ship and betrays the unbending moral code by which he leaves. Like just imagine you are living with your own moral values and what like, Someday something happens and you just abandon all the uh, uh, moral code of your li life. Okay, so that actually happened with Lord Jim. Okay, he did that, right? Now, denounced by society, Jim seeks redemption on a remote Malaysian island. So, when he went to a Malaysian island, a remote Malaysian island. So, you need to read the story. Uh, uh, I don't think I can do more with this because uh, this is going to be very long if I'll cover detail by detail or to the point uh, summary so you need to do it okay so the first character I have already told you that Jim the second character is Marlow seasoned British sea captain okay so who was he sea captain witnesses and relates Jim's struggles for moral redemption okay so he uh, was uh, relating himself to Jim. So, somewhere a friend we can say. Now, the third is Brown, vengeful, letter day, buccaneer, 
sets in motion tragic events resulting in Jean's death. Okay, so kind of antagonist here. Then Steen, merchant, he was a merchant, adventurer, entomologist, and idealist, helps Jean revive his dreams of heroism. Now moving on. Inheritors, the inheritors. So here. So here, uh, it's very interesting, okay. Let me tell you. The in inheritor, in the inheritor, there is a metaphor. Metaphor of fourth dimension. So what it is? Basically, a generation of people, in one hand, on the other, like, in, on the one hand, there is a generation who have older values, traditional values, okay. And on the other hand, you will feel a modern generation. So here what is happening, um, basically an uh, older generation ha who have traditional values of interdependence was being, uh, uh, being uh, like overpowered by the modern generation who believe in expediency, Kaloshi, using political power to bring down the older order, old order. So they wanted to bring down the old order and uh, the people who have traditional values was uh, uh, struggling there okay so that kind of thing is happening here you can relate this if you are old somewhere uh, 30s or in 30s or somewhere like even if you are 25 you can relate that uh, with your uh, 20 15 years siblings or okay so i I uh, have seen this thing, so I can relate that. Now, The Inheritors was published in 1901 and it has a subtitle, An Extravagant Story. Okay, what it is? An Extravagant Story, the subtitle. It's a quashy science fiction novel. Do remember this. It's a quashy science fiction novel. Now, it was like The Inheritors was not only written by uh, Joseph Conrad, it was collaborated with Ford Medox Ford. Okay, so this is also information that you must remember. Moving on. Next is 7th, okay. Typhoon. It's also a novella, a short novel basically. <clears throat> it was published in 1902. Okay, so the basic details are only needed here. It was published in Britain in Typhoon and Other Stories, okay. So, it was having a title of Typhoon and Other Stories when it was publishing in Britain by Henneman in 1903. So, it was published in 1902 as well and it was also published in Britain in 1902-3 by Henneman, okay, having a title of Typhoon and Other Stories. Then, eighth, Nostromo, wait a minute. Nostromo. The subtitle is Colin, A Tale of the Seaboard, which was published in 1904 and it was set in a fictitious South American Republic of Constaguana. Okay, so it was set in Constaguana, do remember. And there is one more thing that something F. Scott Fitzgerald said about this particular work. He said, I would rather have written Nostromo than any other novel. Okay. I would rather have written Nostromo than any other novel. So, do remember these things. I have already covered important works and uh, what I have not covered the summaries. Okay. So, do remember to do that, to cover that. It's very important for you to cover them. Okay. So, we have completed today's lecture. We'll meet in the next lecture. Thank you very much and all the very best.